Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Romable Friday weekly webinar. Uh, my name is Lars Burgess. I will be demonstrating today uh, in New in Roads 2.2.0 the capability to do Android push. Uh, so today we're going to walk through doing a push message into your Rhodes application, um, both using the the push callback, which is a, a feature in Rhodes, uh, and as well as using the automatic uh, push instructions that comes with the um, with the Rhodes and Rosync. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to generate a new project in my Rohub account and we're going to call this project Android Push Demo. And You'll see here it gives me the option to set the Rose and Rosing version. You want to make sure that it's at 2.2.1 which is the default in Rohub. And it'll take a few seconds to generate the projects. Great. So now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to clone these applications locally. First we'll start with the Rhodes application. And we'll go ahead and grab the Rosync application. Great. Now the first step in setting up a push for Android is actually in the Rosync application, I need to provide an auth token. Now this auth token, you can find out more information by going to this link. Um, Basically, what you need to do is authenticate with the uh, Google Cloud to Device Messaging Service, uh, and you will receive an auth token. So I've already got an auth token here. I'm going to go ahead and use it in my application. So let's go ahead and open up both of these projects. I'd like to use TextMate. So. So in my Rosync application, the only thing that I need to do here is I want to set up my auth token. So go ahead and give it the token for my account. And the next thing we want to do with our Rosync application is we want to give it some uh, a source adapter. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a source adapter. And you're probably familiar with this. Uh, basically what this generates is a spec for the uh, source adapter class and then it generates this uh, template source adapter class. And we'll want this uh, source adapter to generate some data, so I'm going to go ahead and use the store product example, which I have some code here. And that's it. That's all that our Rosync application needs to be able to push uh, messages. So I'll go ahead and commit these changes back to Rohub. Here. All right, so now it's pushed, and I can go ahead and deploy it.
Now, the first time you deploy uh, your ROSYNC application in Rohub, it will take uh, about a minute. Uh, it has to set up the uh, the Ruby environment, including all the necessary gems and everything. So, while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and set up my Rhodes application to receive push messages. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a model to match my source adapter. And we have name, brand, price, quantity, and SKU. And I'll add a link to my new model here on the home page. And I want to make sure that this model will sync, so I'm going to turn on sync for this model. Now the only thing here that I need to do for my Rhodes application to enable Android push is I need to set up the, um, go to the Android section here. I need to set up the Android push sender. So this actually goes into your build.yaml. I'll go ahead and set that up now. So there's two things I want to do. First, I need to enable the capability for push. And because I'm going to be testing the vibrate function, I want to enable vibrate as well. Then I'll create my Android section. Now it's important with these YAML files that you use uh, spaces and not tabs. Uh, just to make sure that it gets the right uh, number of indentations. And we're going to be using our support account. So the first thing I want to test here with push is I want to set a push callback. What this will do is when the Rhodes application receives the push message, it's going to call this method here. I'm going to create this method called push notify in my settings controller. Um, so that basically what will happen is the push notify will be will be called, it will receive some parameters, um, and then I can do something in that app, in that method like refresh the page or display a pop-up. So let's go ahead and add a push notification. And I'll go ahead and put it in my settings controller. Let's go ahead and put it at the end here. And we'll just do something simple, like alert. Where's my alert? Uh, so we have one question here. Uh, are you able to push alerts without using Rosync? Uh, the answer is yes. This is um, this is where you would use the push notify. Um, this push notif this push notify method will be called no matter how you send your your uh, your push message. So in this webinar, I'll be showing pushing the uh, sending the message through Rosync, but in in uh, a generic case, you could send a push message without Rosync as well. The alert here. Okay. So I'll go ahead and add an alert here. And that's a very simple push uh, message here, so that's um, all I have to do now is add my notification.
And let's go ahead and um, commit this back up. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a build for Android, because for uh, for Android, um, we found that actually the um, uh, the device is the best way to test push. Uh, the emulator is, uh, has some known issues with the Android SDK, so I'm going to go ahead and do a device build for Android. Just build my master branch. And while this is running, um, if anyone has any questions, now would be a great time to type them into the questions box on your GoToWebinar panel. <clears throat> okay, great. So now this build is finished, I'm going to go ahead and download it. And I have here a device that's plugged in uh, to my computer, so I want to make sure that that is online. You can do that with the ADB devices command. Okay. So I'll go ahead and unzip that. And I'll install the APK using the ADB install command. So now what we can do is we can test our push by going to the Rosync console. Oh, looks like our deploy failed. We're going to try that again. Great. So that time it worked. So now I can actually go to the Rosync console here, running on Rohub. Go ahead and log in. And I'm going to go ahead and log in on my application here so it'll synchronize. So we'll see here now I have a test user. And using the roasting console, I can go ahead and test push by clicking on the ping user. And it gives you some options here, but since I implemented my push, my, uh, push callback, um, it's not going to actually use any of these things. So I can just test the message here. And we'll go ahead and turn on video. Okay.
and you can see here I got the push message. And this is the message that we put into our push notification. Great, so that is, um, that's the uh, simple demo of how to uh, do push notifications inside of your Rhodes application. And you could, you could send these push notifications, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with any server. You don't need to use Rosync. Um, I, I used Rosync here for demonstration purposes. So now what we're going to want to do is, uh, I'm not going to want to use this push notify anymore. And I'm going to let Rosync drive uh, how the Rhodes application handles the push message. Let's say, for example, I wanted to uh, do a sync when I received a push. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and disable my push notify here. 